All right, here we go. I'm in the house, not in the car. The studio. Uh, Docent Prodigy and Motophoto Adventures. And other things like just talking with Jason and Ty. But today I want to talk about forgiveness. Not the big drastic kind like in the movie Revenant where the protagonist ends up surviving the bear after being left by all of his friends, gets back to town and decides not to exact revenge on them. Nobody really lives that except for maybe people in movies and a few examples here and there in history. I'm talking about the kind that we on uh, normal people have to endure every single day, like a person taking up two parking spots or the Karen on the cell phone in front of you at the cashier at the convenience store. Those types of forgiveness. So I want to talk about two examples, I think. Number one, this one's kind of fun. I had a dog named Craig. He was a yellow lab, one of those fluffy kind. Angel wing, lived to be 13. Awesome. Docile. He blew out both of his back knees at three, but that made him a little more docile. Um, but we would walk, go on walks, and he would walk very calmly and collectedly and with some manners, respectable type. Well, he passed away about two years ago, and about two weeks later, my wife and I decided we were dog people, and I said I wanted another dog. I wanted a yellow, fluffy dog again, like my Craig was. And, of course, three days later, she sends me a picture of a brown, you know, a brown lab, chocolate brown lab. <coughs> I got a damn brown dog, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, check him out on Instagram, damn brown dog. Anyhow, this dog's temperament is completely opposite of Craig's. He's not docile. He's a chocolate tornado. He's a brown whirlwind. I can't keep him straight. Now, a little bit of this is my fault because I work from home and I let the open the door and he runs around like a crazy dog um, when he wants to and then he sleeps it off and he does it all over again. But um, he gets his exercise and I've got a lot of work to do and I haven't been teaching him manners outside. We have very few visitors at the house while I'm working and so whenever somebody does come up, like the UPS guy, <sighs> all heck breaks loose. Anyhow, I decided I would take my dog, Pike, the brown tornado, for a walk down the street. I had the muzzle on him. I had the halty on him. I had the whole shebang because he's learned really quickly that he can turn around and back out of his collar. So I had all the precautions necessary. And I'm walking down the street, and he's doing fine. I got treats in my hand, and we got everything under control. And I get to the stop sign where I'm going to turn around, and I'm coming back toward the house again. I turn around, and they're approaching me was a mother-daughter combo. Pike hadn't seen them yet, but now he has. And he, with all 70-something pounds of him, probably 80 by now, 70-something pounds of this year-and-a-half-year-old dog starts taking off at, at breakneck speed toward the little girl because he just needs to play with people. And so I have to hold him back, and that all that's going well for a moment until the people, the mom and the daughter, don't stop walking. They keep straight up coming at me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And Pike's like, err. And the kid's like, yay. And mom's like, oh. <sighs> and so Pike gets the idea that he'll come back to me in a hustle. And he, you ever seen that? scene when the couple meets in 101 Dalmatians and they get all wrapped up with the leashes. Round and round and round he went, both of my legs together. And then he decided, I'm going to go back after the girl again. So he takes off and I take down straight to the concrete and I hit my chin right on the concrete and blood's dripping and I'm trying to grab a dog and those people still are coming and I'm like, whoa, and everybody, there's the pandemonium is insane. The music track would have been awesome. So I have to pick up my 70-pound dog with my chin bleeding on top of him and walk all the way back to the house, and I'm a human. Seems to be a theme in these, that I get to be in an angry state. It <coughs> doesn't last long, not generally, but that was a frustrating moment, I was for sure. In fact, as I recall now, I was on the phone with Chris Smith, and I had to say, hey, I'll be right back. I've um, just, you know, injured myself. So I'm back at the house. Now, this is where the forgiveness parts come in. I'm glad you waited. It's easy to forgive my dog. He's my dog. 
I mean, leashes, legs, that whole algebra of, of that scenario never even occurred to him. He just wanted to go play with the kid. I can't really um, not forgive, if there's even forgiveness that is necessary, to the kid. I mean, walking with the mom, sees a nice dog, wants to go play, everything is cool. I'm happy that she felt comfortable approaching my happy animal with his bright eyes and big smile. So there's no forgiveness necessary there, so that, that, one, that one's easy. The mom, on the other hand, come on. Recognize a situation, help a fella out. Once he hits the ground with his face, stop walking toward me and making the, 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 the situation worse. That one was tough. She was put in a weird position. She didn't know if the dog was dangerous. Weird looking dude with a big beard and probably sunglasses. Not, okay. Got it. Forgive that one too. So on with my life. I probably have a scar underneath my beard. Example number two. Recently, a situation of drama transpired between a person I did not know and a person I did know, where the, the person I did not know was casting accusations to the person I did know, and in doing so, invoked my name as a point of validation to the accuser's point. I found out this uh, around and around in the in the drama circle, you know, it, it word spreads. And so I said, well, if my name is being invoked, I, I, I should find out what's up, you know, I guess. So I messaged the accuser who I did not know. And so the accusations were leveled as a person at a person I did know, and I knew those accusations weren't true. And so I said, those aren't true, blah, 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 back and forth, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 31 unresponded to messages later, I decide that this, prob this conversation probably isn't for me, and I'm bowing out, see you later, I don't need any more of that. I thought it was over. A couple of weeks later, I get a message that was extraordinarily hateful and hurtful on purpose from the accuser person, saying things like I didn't take his side and things like that. It was very bizarre. It was very bizarre. And I, find, I found myself, again, at that anger state that I sometimes find in myself and having to reflect on and to do, determine if my anger is appropriate or not. Now, it's a troll. Everybody gets them. I, that's fine. I get it. But this one, it was personal and it was on purpose. I have a very hard time forgiving purposeful, intentional harm. It's like if somebody kicks a puppy. Do you have to forgive that? Okay. The Bible says, even if you don't believe the Bible, the Bible says that in Matthew, Peter came up to Jesus and he said, is it really necessary and cool that we forgive everybody seven times? And Jesus goes, nope, 70 times seven. And that's for one individual, I was assuming in context. Well, if you do 70 times 7, you're supposed to forgive that many people over the course of your life. I'm never going to reach that goal. I'm barely going to get to the 20-yard line because I don't know if I can forgive the troll. But if you count the Karen, I'm on my way. Thanks for joining me for another talk, this time in my studio, about things not motorcycle.